Are you worried about your bladder control after prostate removal surgery? Unfortunately, up to 80% of men suffer from bladder leakage after this surgery. But the really good news is that the exercises I'm about to show you can help you quickly overcome bladder leakage and get back to your normal life. Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I'm guiding you through pelvic floor muscle training to help you prepare and recover your bladder control fast after going through a radical prostatectomy. Now, please feel welcome to let me know in the comments below if you have questions or comments about this training, or you might like to share this video with someone that you know who's undergoing this type of surgery. Now, recent research has shown that these exercises work much faster than traditional pelvic floor training after prostatectomy. Until recently, pelvic floor training for men has been based on exercises for bladder leakage, actually for women. Now, this current research found that men who used a new pelvic floor training regime, and this is a regime designed for men, actually, um, and these men started their um, training before surgery, these guys regained their bladder control significantly faster than the men who did the, the traditional pelvic floor exercises. Now, today I'm gonna to share this new training method with you to help you stop bladder leakage fast, and this is regardless of the type of prostatectomy surgery that you have. Now we're going to go through this training really thoroughly. We're going to cover when to start preparing, the best training positions to use, and the most effective technique to use as well. Then finally we'll cover how many exercises you need to do. Before I just share three little helpful tips to make your bladder control training exercises more effective. Now, First question is, when to start preparing? Well, according to the research that I've mentioned already, try to start these preparation exercises around five weeks prior to your surgery if you can. But I'm going to add to that, even if you only have a week or two before your operation, it's really worth starting these exercises now. And this is while you can still feel your pelvic floor muscles working rather than waiting until after your operation when the exercises are just going to be more difficult to feel. So start as soon as you can. The three best training positions are as follows. If you're able to do the exercises, do them lying down and standing and sitting as well. So you're gonna use all three positions uh, during the course of the day. If you can't do your exercises sitting or standing, start with the lying put down position and then progress your training to upright positions when you're able to. Let's now talk about the most effective exercise technique to use. The pelvic floor exercise technique that you use to prepare is really vital for your success. If you want more information, you can also check out my beginner's Kegel exercises linked above, but I'm going to go through this now with you as well. Now, these preparation exercises are for the pelvic floor muscles located in this area of your body. These muscles wrap around the base of the penis and a little deeper in around the tube, the urine tube, that carries urine out of your body. The correct technique for exercising these muscles is to stop the flow of urine and shorten the penis while continuing to breathe. Now that might sound a little challenging at first. Let's break down that technique to make it easier for you. I'd like you to start doing this exercise gently when you're starting out. Try to get your technique correct before doing stronger exercises when you can manage them. Now, here's the first part of the exercise. Practice along with me if you'd like to at home. Start by gently contracting your muscles as if you're trying to slow or stop the flow of urine. And now relax these muscles back to resting. Next, I'd like you to try to gently shorten your penis or retract it, drawing it inwards towards your body. If you're not sure about this action, think about the way a turtle shortens its neck when it moves its head back in towards its shell. This is a small movement. Now you try. Gently try to shorten the penis and try to keep breathing as you do so. And now relax back to resting. How did you go with that exercise? It's not always easy and it can take a little practice before it starts to feel more natural. So take your time with these exercises. Now, finally, let's put both actions together to complete the whole exercise gently. I want you to stop the flow and shorten the penis while continuing to breathe and now relax. Now, let's talk about how many exercises you need to do. Before your surgery, 
you're going to be practicing using a combination of quick, fast exercises and long, slow exercises. The quick exercises are one second holds. Let's do that now together. Contract for one and now relax. That's your one second hold. Now let's practice a long, slow exercise, holding your muscles contracted. And you can do this for up to 10 seconds while you breathe. Here's your turn. Try to stop the flow of urine, shorten the penis, keep contracting for one and two and keep holding gently if you can. Keep breathing and holding and now relax. So that wasn't quite 10 seconds, but you get the idea of doing the slow, long exercises. When you start out doing your exercises, just do them gently and just for the length of time that you can manage, even if it's just for a couple of seconds, you're doing really well. Now you'll find that over, with practice over time and over the coming weeks, you'll be able to hold these contractions longer and stronger. So here's your daily training guide before your surgery. And I'll also list this in the description below for you to access this information as well. Now let's talk briefly about training after surgery and how many exercises you need to do. After surgery, most men recommend their exercises after their catheter has been removed and not before. Now, if you find that you're leaking urine with your exercises after surgery, maybe start them lying down for the first two to three weeks and then gradually progress to sitting and standing exercises as you can. After your operation, just do the number of exercises you can manage and hold each exercise up to 10 seconds for your longer holds and do your short ones as well. You may find that the exercises aren't as easy as they were before surgery, but don't worry, your ability will usually return with practice over time. So how long until you notice results after your surgery? Well, you may notice your bladder control improves between two and six weeks after your operation. And many men find that they're almost dry with no bladder leakage at all after three months of training after their surgery. And this is with their, with their regular pelvic floor muscle training. So finally, let's go through the three important bladder control tips that I mentioned at the outset of this video. Tip number one is to limit your caffeine intake to one serve a day. And this includes coffee and tea. Unfortunately, caffeine irritates the bladder. It makes you want to empty your bladder more frequently and urgently. And it's also a diuretic, so it increases the bladder contents and makes the bladder fill up faster. Number two is to reduce your alcohol intake as well. And for the same reasons that I've basically already mentioned for coffee. Three is to try to wait for at least two hour intervals between emptying your bladder. So what this does is it helps to retrain how much your bladder can actually store and this is especially helpful after having a catheter for a week. So we've gone through quite a lot, haven't we? I really hope this information helps you understand how to prepare for your prostatectomy and improve your bladder control really fast afterwards. If you have questions or comments, please feel most welcome to post them below. And I'd really appreciate you liking this video if you found it helpful below too. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll see you next time.